Welcome to Hustle and Pro. I'm your host, Kelly Walker. So basketball season in Frisco uh, for the Texas Legends is wrapped up, which means we finally get a player on Hustle and Pro. It's been a while, so I'm excited to have this conversation. So welcome to Hustle and Pro, Carleek Jones. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I How definitely appreciate it. I'm good. Good. Doing pretty good. Good. Okay, so you are a point guard from Cincinnati, Ohio, and you were new to us here in Frisco this past season with the Legends. So first of all, how do you like our little sports town here in Frisco? Um, you know, I love it. Um, I know I, I got here for this first year, and you know, the the area just kind of embraced me, um, and and just the the love and you know the the support that you know the Frisco area gives. Um, alone is um, always big for me personally yeah. and I also thought it was it was big for our team yeah we I mean the legend specifically like prides itself on like embracing just the words mm -hmm. you just said and like bringing you into the community and bringing the community into the team yeah. like did you notice that as yes. playing here um, that it's not just it's not just basketball right, right. there's um, more you know every game um, and even outside of you know the gym like I would run into people um, and they would just ask, like, you know, sometimes I would expect a basketball kind of question sure. or or maybe a picture. But, you know, some just ask, you know, how I like the area, how I like being here. And, um, you know, of course, they talk about, you know, coming to the games and stuff. But, um, you know, just having normal conversations kind of kind of stuck with me as well. That's good. But it's not just all about down to business. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned we're off season. Um, what are what does your off season look like? Like, what do you do when you're not on the basketball court? Um, it's it's different, um, especially you know playing and, and having a long season. Um, right now I'm just figuring it out. Um, right now I've started back working out. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you took a minute. To yeah, like not I be, took yeah. a, I took a few weeks off. Um, I just actually came back from uh, Cabo. Um, nice. I took a little trip with a couple teammates. Had a little relaxation. Yeah, time. that's um, good. And and really just you know kind of let my body rest. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, that's one of the things I've I've been trying to figure out lately. Um, just what I like to do, <laughs> um, and what I want to do with my my extra time that I have now. Is that because you've just been like so focused on basketball for so long? You yes. like there are. It's it's easy, right, for mm -hmm. athletes to get wrapped up in the identity of that of that you're an athlete for that for sure. thing, and so then you sort of you sacrifice a lot of the other things in your life, and you don't have the time to focus on other hobbies right. and interests, and you you kind of get lost, right? Yeah. So. Uh, for example, like I was talking to a couple of my teammates, and I told them like I I want to take cooking classes. Oh, cool. Like I can cook, but you know how you know there's certain stuff you can't cook so you go out and eat sure and it's like nah I want to be able to to make it in the house and stuff like that's uh, one thing I kind of probably will look at I like to that do well yeah I asked you earlier what you have for breakfast yeah. which I ask all my guests that before we start just so y'all know I do a sound check to make sure our mics are on and I usually say like well, what do you have for breakfast just to get them to talk and normally it's like something like either a bowl of cereal, <laughs> a granola bar, right. something that you can just pull off a shelf, right? right. Or whatever, but you like cooked. You yeah. actually cooked a meal. I like, I like to cook, yeah. That's awesome. I, like cook. I love that. Well, good. Then maybe you can uh, branch out and do some of that stuff yeah. before you're called back here in a few months or, right. or wherever in a few months. That's the plan. Yeah. So, um, so I mentioned, you know, the identity of basketball. Did you play other sports when you were younger? Um, yes, I think I, I played a little bit of everything. I played okay. baseball, I played football, I even played soccer. Um, but around that, you know, baseball kind of stopped when I was around, you know, seven, eight. Okay. Um, and soccer as well. Then I played football all the way up until high school, and then that's when I had just chose one sport and, and went with basketball. But I, I did play other sports. Was that um, like a um, you chose to focus on basketball, or were you in one of those communities where your coaches are like, you have um, to pick one if you're gonna do this? No, nah, I decided to pick one. Okay. Um, I honestly really stopped playing football because guys were starting to get real big, um, and I just said nah. And I didn't. My love for basketball was so much more than all the other sports, so I just chose basketball. It's but funny I, that you say that though. The guys getting big because then yeah. you end up in a sport where like guys as a professional big. basketball player like. These are the biggest guys. Yeah. Like they're not, you know, maybe like the strongest guys or whatever, uh -huh. but like they're the tallest, biggest yeah, guys. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and I and I thought I was I was cho choosing the right sport, saying like you know not going against the bigger guys, 
Then as I got to high school and college, I'm like, well, I can't say it was because of the bigger guys. Right. Cause guys are really seven foot tall now. So yeah. it's crazy. But uh, I, I did play, you know, those other sports and I enjoyed them. Um, but I think that basketball was my, my best sport. So I, I stuck with that. Yeah. Do you have to like at what point when that happens, do you have to say, all right, I got to figure out how to use my size and either like learn how to body up against these bigger guys or learn how to move like how like to use it to your advantage. Like, do you figure that out by yourself or do you go to specific people or watch specific players and be like, OK, that guy's my size and he's made it work. So like, here's here's the skills and tactics um, I need to figure out. For the most part, it was, you know, seeing I think it was like kind of going through it myself. Um, in a sense. Um, also seeing other guys like, for example, you know, I'm a big fan of Kyrie Irving, um, Chris Paul. Those guys are kind of my size. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing them, you know, how they move and, you know, do things against bigger guys kind of give me a mindset of stuff I need to do. But you also, I feel like you also don't learn unless you're in it. So, right. you know, doing certain things and maybe getting my shot blocked or something like that kind of teaches you alone, like, okay, can't do that. Next time. Or, yeah. you know, do a different move and stuff like that. On top of just watching, you know, film with coaches and stuff like that. So um, those are, you know, three things that, you know, kind of help me with, you know, adjusting to size right. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's all strategy. Everybody has to have one, yes. regardless of your size. Yes. If you're the biggest guy out there or not. Still like, have to have a strategy. You have to figure out how to use it right. Right. Right? Because you can't just be tall in basketball, right? Yeah. Like, to, at your level. You have to know how to use it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned Kyrie and Chris Paul, right? So I was going to ask you, um, like, who were some of the athletes, whether they were basketball players or even football, if that's a sport you still like, liked watching. Like, growing up, like, who were the guys you were watch looking up to? Um, like I said, Kyrie. I, I was going to guess. I was going to guess. From based on your age, you were born in 97. Yes. Which is when I graduated high school. <laughs> um, but I was going to guess based on your age and where you grew up, like, a LeBron guy. Yes. Okay. So I kind of watched... Uh, Kyrie Irving and Chris Paul just because they're my size and I knew like you know I'm not going to be a LeBron James well, yeah. you know body type built or height um, but I, I chose LeBron just because of the stuff he did on the court I felt like was amazing um, he's a great player uh, team leader and a, it seems like a great guy to be around yeah um, I don't know either but it seems like it yeah, right? yeah. And, and my biggest thing with him is just the stuff he does off the floor um, you know, so it's like, not, but when you're growing up, what gets you and like when we think about kids, what gets you first is the on the court stuff, right? right? Like you, you, cause you, to be noticed, you have to have the on the court stuff right. to get your name, like to keep elevating people to keep talking about you. And then people right. start, you know, for sure for kids to notice you. But then like, as you got older and as he got older and as he was like a veteran, right, then he starts bringing in all these mm -hmm causes and ways that he helps people and things that he does in the entertainment industry and like all the shows he produced, like all these cool things he I does. Agree. But I it, agree. that other piece has to start first, right? And right. then you notice like, like, I don't know, it sort of sometimes makes you validate like who you pick as somebody mm -hmm. to pay attention to when you start seeing some of those other pieces. Right. Like what are some of the things that you kind of notice about him, I guess? Um, so like you said, even when I was young, I didn't, I didn't realize it. Um, it was just more so just his skill on the court. Yeah. Um, but got, but when I got to like high school, going into college, I kind of looked at it as because I'm a I'm a firm believer. Like I, I love kids. Um, I, I'm a huge firm, uh, a huge believer in giving back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just because you know there, there was once guys who you know did it for me. Yeah. So um, I love to give back. You know, maybe to my community or or, or just in kids in general. Um, you know, teach them what I maybe once wasn't taught or right. to teach them what I was taught. Yeah. Um, but, you know, seeing in high school and college, just the stuff he did um, off the floor, um, you know, charity events, um, and then eventually buying the school and, and stuff like that. I just thought that that was, you know, um, amazing. Like I said, and, and, and learning around that age, like leaving high school or early high school and college, it, that's when I realized, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger than basketball. Right. Um, and basketball is big, um, and it's, 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 a, it's a good thing, and it's a great sport, and it's a blessing. But, um, you know, what you do with the benefits of it is also huge, too. And, and yeah. I, I really looked up to him with, yeah. with all the things he do off the floor. I love seeing guys that do, and, and females, too, in their sport, yeah. that, that 
it's like it's like once you've built your foundation of your skill and, and your play in the game, then you can go and realize like, okay, there is so much more now I can touch and do. because of because of what I've built for mm -hmm. you know my name or whatever. Or even if even if you're somebody that most people have never heard of, right. you still have more resources to build something in a community. Or even if it's just you know like with what the legends do, like visiting a school or having camps or right. all these different ways. I mean. I don't know like how much detail you see that this team does, but I mean they have like missions of the month where they're collecting something every month from the community where people drop stuff off here at Comerica and it's maybe it's shoes, maybe it's canned goods or whatever, or y'all are going as a team to serve in a soup kitchen, all right. these different things. And so like I I, I love the beyond the the game thing because mm -hmm. they really embody that here in Frisco. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love when when you see athletes do that and. And sometimes when they like big league NFL and NBA give away these big like like Walter Payton awards and like volunteer of the year and man of the year awards and stuff, you kind of like start to see how much time these guys are spending in their own personal life, like helping and, and giving back. Right. So is that something that like you'll um, you guys you will try to like incorporate into your career as you're. Oh, 100 um, percent. You know, I, I've even been thinking of ideas to do now. Um, and this is, you know, just my first year out of college. Um, and I don't think it's ever a time where it's too early to do something. Right. Um, so, People you know, always look up to you. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and I'll, um, I've, I've told Brittany that I, I even, I'll be around. So I, I'll, I'll be interested in doing, you know, community service or, you know, you know whatever, you know, is available. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. And then, like, you know, I even, you know, will possibly just want to kind of get back and give, like, a little camp mm -hmm. or, you know, something back home in Cincinnati. Um, but yeah, I you know, love that, that. that. Those are those are my plans. Take um, it to your home, your home, yeah. you know, your community kids, mm -hmm. and the camps they do here. Uh, whenever like a VIP guest gets to pop in, like it, it's a huge deal. So I have mm -hmm. a 11 year old boy who plays basketball okay. and comes to Legends camps and loves them. Like his whole, he's a. Uh, like a Duke Blue Devils team, that's their rec team name. Their whole Blue Devils team comes to these Legends camps oh, okay. and they love them because the Legends like mix a good amount of fun, but then also you're learning and right. you're learning skill. But um, they have like surprise guests that pop in and you know, it's either a player or Spud or Dell or mm. Malcolm, like you know, all the names that people in town that can surprise these kids and they are just like in awe. Yeah. Of any anybody that comes in just to talk to them. I mean, you know, five minutes standing in front of a group of young boys wanting to play basketball mm -hmm. and girls. It's a girls' camp too. It like it, it's maybe ten minutes of your time, right? But it's like something that's gonna stick yeah. with those kids for a long time. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I and I definitely didn't know they had camps. Yeah, like I know they have them, but they were like having them during our season. Yeah, and I think one was at our our practice facility. Yeah, and I and I came walking in. And I'm hearing a lot of screaming, but I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. So I get to the gym, and like there's all these kids just shooting and stuff. So I kind of just pop my head in there, and like you know, just the smile on their faces. Oh yeah, um, see the high fives and stuff. I thought I thought it was cool. It is cool. And and I just was kind of like, well, I mean, why y'all didn't tell us? Like you know, it was camps <laughs> and stuff. Like we would have come by. Uh, definitely came by and stuff but I'm sure they will from now on. Yeah. Yeah, they have winter camps and spring break camps and basically when y'all aren't using one of these facilities, they might have kids running through there. Gotcha. And they're really fun. And they do a whole like tournament style at the end of the week and they do like an NBA and G League and they all play and win right. and win prizes and give away um or in a room right now with like different jerseys and stuff and mm -hmm. and they do like giveaways like yeah. like I, my son has a, a legends jersey on his wall in his room that he won for good sportsmanship at a camp like i'm telling you this yeah. stuff goes a long way so Definitely the impact cool. you're making on kids and that you will make as you continue your career is is important i promise yeah. you so thank you for giving back and planning to give back no problem. okay so i'm um, we're going to talk to some, some more to carleek about his this season um career so far and some of future stuff but first we're going to take a quick break hear from a sponsor we'll be right back with more hustle and pro i want to tell you guys about beyond studios i'm going there for pilates right now and i love it and i want you guys to try it out you can actually try your first class for free when you use my code hustle and pro that's hustle ampersand ampersand pro and you'll get your first class for free so you can check it out at either their beyond studios location in west frisco on fourth army or the beyond 500 which is at 
Lebanon and Legacy, and that's more of a cardio workout. So head to thebeyondstudios.com to find out more. All right, we're back with Hustle and Pro talking to Carlique Jones of the Texas Legends. So I want to brag on Carlique a little bit. So I'm going to read, read some stuff. Um, just because my audience might not know, I want to tell the people. So you played for Radford, right? I don't, I'm not super familiar because that's probably like a, in your area, in your neck of the woods up in Ohio, right? Um, is that, yeah? Is that uh, where it is? Um, it's in Virginia. Okay, so sorry. It's, it's, yeah. it's closer to... to, to, to. <laughs> To it's closer than Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it. Sorry, sorry. Okay, but you earned the Big South Freshman of the Year award there. And then you finished your college career at, okay, Louisville. Yes. That's how you say it, right? Louisville. Okay, Louisville, <laughs> where you earn honors as first team all ACC. So um, when people, like when you're coming here and starting your pro career, so like uh, when people don't know you, they haven't seen you play yet. So, like, what is it about you? You get these, you know, freshman of the year and then ACC player of the year, all these things. So, like, what is your strength as a player? Like, what's your highlight reel, if you can tell me in um, synopsis? Uh, I'll <laughs> just say my, my biggest highlight is, is just winning. Um, you know, I, I just know how to win. And, you know, that's always my common goal. But um, I think when someone sees me play, I think they see excitement. Um and just can tell that, you know, my love for the game um, and just that I enjoy playing it. Um, you know, I always like to get the crowd involved, I always, most of the time, have a smile on my face and, and, and also just cheering for my, my teammates. Um, but that's, you know, when you, you if you don't know me and you, you come see me play, that's, that's what you'll see. That's what you'll see. I love it. That's probably why you get all these votes and honors and people that <laughs> see that and people like on the media side and coaching side who, who vote for these kind of awards. They like see the effort, right? right. The team player, mm -hmm. you're probably a leader. We have the positive energy, all that right. stuff. And yeah. yeah, plus all the stats that back <laughs> you up. I have some of those, but I didn't read all those. All right, all right. So you just finished your first pro season. Um, it seems like it was a roller coaster, at least on paper. So you like rewinding all the way to starting this like August or year or whatever, the, the basketball year. So you, you worked out with the Mavs, you end up on the Legends squad. Then you get called up like right before Christmas. Yes. Yeah to the Mavs. So you get a 10 day call up on the Mavs. You play three games or so in that span. Yes. Does that sound about right? Yes. Okay, so you do that. Then you, let's see. Well, first of all, let's stop there. Tell me about your Mavs experience. Um, you know, I, I think it was a credible experience. Um, you know, for a dream, you know, to play, you know, in the NBA um, and, and to get a call up. Um, was an amazing feeling and a, a blessing for sure. Um, you know, I was just happy to be there. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, everybody kept asking me how I'm feeling and am I happy or am I nervous? And I'm just like, you know, no. Right. Just I'm just, you know, happy, happy to be, to be here. Um, I love that. Happy to be around, you know, other, you know, NBA players. And the crazy thing is I was called up on my birthday. So oh, is that this, December 23rd, your this, birthday? Yeah. What so I got called up on my birthday. And That's it was, awesome. How cool. um, they even threw me in, you know, first quarter, and I'm just like, what? you know, it's yeah. crazy. That's um, awesome. I didn't realize. So it was that. hard for me to be, you know, it was. I feel like it was nothing that could, you know, you know, change how I was feeling. You yeah. know, I was just happy to be there. And, That's cool. And it was an unbelievable feeling and um, an experience. And uh, I'm glad to hear it because when like local people in Frisco, we watch you guys play here. When we see that you're called up for 10 days, we all get really excited for you guys. Yeah. Like, it's a big deal, and I know it's a big deal to the legends, and they, you know, put put highlight reels online and all right. this fun stuff for everybody to watch. But, like, I'm always like, oh, that's such a cool, just, it's just what we all want, right. you know, for this level. And so it's really fun. Uh, was there somebody before you headed over there? I mean, of course, getting called up on your birthday is a big deal. Was there somebody you were most looking forward to being out there with? Um... <laughs> uh, a Mavs player or anything in particular, or just all of it? Um, not anybody in, in particular. Just being on the floor in general. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's it's one thing to get called up, and I understand. Like, you know, they they're still in season. You know, they're still trying to win games and stuff like that. Um, so I I just kind of told myself, you know, you know, they give me the opportunity to play and and stuff. I'm gonna go in and. And just be myself. Yeah. Um, so my my goal was just I was more so happy to touch the floor uh, and, and and play with some of those guys 
Um, so I wasn't, you know, kind of looking to, to play with any individual. Yeah. But, you know, just to be able to step on the floor and help the team out. I mean, that. surely you're watching the playoffs, right, anyways, because right. you always do. But, like, like, where do you sit with that when you probably have your home, your homegrown team that you probably root for and then you have other, like, these connections now? How do you um, watch the playoffs? I mean, like you said, I, I, I watch it anyway just because I, I love the game of basketball yeah. and I'm interested to see who wins, you know, the whole thing. Um, but, you know, I, I've played for the Mavs um, and I've played for the Mavs G League team, uh, which is the Legends. Um, you know, so I, I'm supporting them. Good. Um, okay. Good answer. It's not like, you know, <laughs> I have anything, you know, against them. Like, I'm, like I said, if I'm cheering for another team or – if anything, if anybody I'll be cheering for, I, I, I'll be cheering for the Mavs before anyone. Yeah. Just because not only did they give me a chance to play with them, but I am in their organization. You're a part of so it. Yeah. I'm definitely cheering for the Mavs, and I do hope they, you know, get the win tonight. Yeah. And Thanks hopefully win them, you know, another title. Yeah, I know. We'll be good. It's time already. So, yeah, you, you've played with a, a good group, yeah. and we'll see how far they can go. Yeah. Okay, so you get done with that 10-day. That then the Nuggets give you a 10-day, which is like – I mean, I think kind of just crazy. I don't know if this yeah. is something y'all all know and talk about beforehand or if it's like, hey, the day of, like, here's what's happening and you get thrown around the country. I don't know. Do you, like, do you know these things are coming? Um, in a sense. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your agent talks to you about all those, you know, things. And um, he kind of gives me a hint, you know, like, you know, your 10 days up soon. Um, there is a possibility you can sign with someone else on a 10-day and, you know, nothing's really final. Yeah. Um, it's all very fluid, I'm yeah. sure, in certain and, parts of the season, right? Um, yeah, and everything yeah. happens so fast. Like, you know, you, you could be in one city one night playing with, you know, for example, I was with the Legends in Vegas. And, you know, the next morning I got called up, and the next day I'm back in Dallas playing yeah. with the Mavs. Right. So, um, you I never mean, know. You just always have to stay ready. And that's what I was going to say. Like, what do you take away from, from these experiences and this, even this first kind of rookie season here? Like, and I think you just told me one of them is you got to always be You don't know what the next day is here. Right. Um, and in your situation, the next day was getting called up a couple of times. But, like, you just have to somehow, like, that's a mental thing, too. Mm -hmm. Physically, right? Yes. You have to always be prepared. The team helps you with that stuff, too. But, like, mentally, right? How right. do you even... But I mean, I'm sure that's something that you had to learn this year. Right, definitely had had to learn that. Um, for example, just like you know, being with the legends and being a guy, you know, who plays you know 35 plus minutes a night and um, consider one of the, you know the star players or one of the you know top performers to going to the Mavs and being you know a fifth man. I mean, mm -hmm. a 15th man or 16th man on the roster. It's like. <laughs> you know, I, I did perform now with the G League team, but now it's like a different ball game. And now it's like you have to mentally be ready. Yeah, you might not start or you might not be the first one off the bench, but yeah. you never know. Um, right. For example, it was a time where, um, you know, I played, you know, I was one of the, the first guards to come off the bench in my first game um, on my uh, Mavs debut. Um, and then the next game I didn't play. And then yeah. the next game I didn't play. Um, you start and then to wonder. You in your head, to... you get to think, okay. Was that it? You know, this next game's on. I'm, I'm not playing. Yeah. And out of nowhere, a guy gets a COVID, boom. They they call your name and you're, you're running towards the table. Yeah. And it's like your your mindset has to always be even keel. Um, it can't be too high. It can't be too low. And like I said, that's an example of you always have to be ready because – you never know. That's a good example because I bet it's not, it's not, I bet it's easy to like, if you sit through the second and third game and you just, then you're, you can like get down on yourself and your confidence goes down. Right. And as you said about your play, like part of you being you is that you're confident out there and you enjoy the game and like that right. makes you be a good player, all these things. And so like, if you're in your head and you're like, I shouldn't be up here, or whatever. Yeah, it's all, it's you're all, be all jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, yeah, work on that. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure, like, this, I would think this season is, like, you probably grew a lot this yeah. first year out of college. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then, so what kind of goals do you set, like, just to kind of wrap up? Like, what do you set for yourself as you've, you've gone through a full year in the league now, had these experiences with two NBA teams and the whole, like, G League season? What do you want to do next? Like, what's your... 
Um, my first goal is just to continue to be to get to keep getting better. Um, you know, try to figure out you know what I can do to better my game to give you know me an advantage or mm -hmm. to give me that next step. But um, you know, I I I like I love to say just enjoy the process. Um, I, I feel like you you know you can't really you know, talk about, you know, where you want to be or where you should be um, when it's not fully all in your control. Right. Um, I, I always just say control what I can control and, and, and just enjoy it. Yeah. Because honestly, there's a lot of people who, who wish to be in, you know, your shoes yeah. or in your position. So um, yep. I think, you know, the best things happen for you when you're humble and when you're hungry and and when you're having fun with what you're, what you're doing. I love it. Control what you can control. You can control your attitude. Right. You can control your Effort. health, like off, your yeah. off season, keeping up and your skill, like, you know, mm -hmm. getting better and that kind of stuff. And then you have to let it kind of be up to the people that do the business side yeah. of the world to, yeah. is where you land. Yeah, because right? if you're, you're in charge, of course you'd be, yeah. you know, on that team. That's not or how on it works, this, yeah, But it's not how it works. Yeah. So just trying to control what you control is, is I think, the biggest thing. I love it. That's great. Very smart. Well, Carlique, thank you for coming in. You're done. You're not even have to be here and you still showed up and sat down with us. And so no I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. It was me. fun talking to you. And thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Hustle and Pro. Subscribe on YouTube and be sure to follow us on Instagram if you don't already. Thanks and we'll see you next time.